I'd like to talk now about gas, refrigeration, or the Brayton cycle run in reverse. So this is just like the Brayton, but instead of a power production, it's a power consumption for refrigeration. So it's a power into the compressor, and the compressor boosting the pressure, that's nice, but it's also going to be receiving some power out of the turbine when we expand the gas. Okay, so once we compress it, it's very hot, and we need to reject some heat in a heat exchanger to the surroundings. Now it's still pretty warm at state three, but when we expand it through the turbine, guess what it becomes? Cold. And after you expand it through the turbine, it can pick up some heat in that heat exchanger and become warm again, okay? And then you can put it through the compressor and it's hot. Do you see how we're running the Brayton cycle backwards and how it could provide refrigeration? So these are the states, one, two, three, four. What does it look like on, um, I don't know, a temperature entropy diagram? We have a line of constant pressure, a line of constant pressure. Which line is the high pressure? Is that one the high pressure and this is the low pressure? So we start off at state one and we put it through the compressor. It goes up to high temperature, high pressure, state two. We cool it down to state three. Is this refrigeration from two to three? No, that's heat rejection out to the high temperature reservoir. But then when we expand it, we get a lot lower temperature at 4. Now that's our refrigeration from 4 to 1. That's our refrigeration. Let's solve a problem. Gas refrigeration cycle has a compressor pressure ratio of 4. So um, again, we'll think of the turbine, the heat exchanger, the, uh, I'm sorry, this is the compressor. Then the turbine, then another heat exchanger. I oh, can't write today. Heat exchanger. And we'll code just like that. I'm reproducing 1 to state 2 to state 3 to state 4. And our pressure ratio is P2 divided by P1 is 4. Okay, there's state 1. At the compressor inlet, the pressure and the temperature of the air are 100 kilopascal and 270 Kelvin. I might as well organize that in a table of properties. So our table will have a state, and then we'll continue on, and we'll talk about pressure in kilopascal, temperature in Kelvin. The t um, so at state one, it's uh, 100 kilopascal and 270 Kelvin. Okay, the temperature at the turbine inlet is 3. 15, so the way over here it's 315 Kelvin, but this is what I needed to read. The isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 82 and of the turbine is 85%. So when I compress, I'm going to go state 2S and 2 actual because I'm going to do that in two steps in my analysis because of using the efficiency of the compressor is 82%. And then the efficiency of the turbine is uh, 85%. Okay, then we'll go to state 3, then we'll go to 4S, 4 actual, and we're done. So um, now let's put in the information about that temperature at the turbine inlet is 315. So that would be right over here, 315 Kelvin for state 3. I don't need that long of a line. And then... All right, now, um, who wants to suggest a strategy for solving this problem? Because we need to calculate the net work per unit mass of airflow. So that's, that's going to be W lowercase w net as for part A. Let's get all the pressures. That's a good one. Get all the pressures first. So fill up this table. What about the pressure at state 2? 400, 400, 400, 100, 100. Perfect. There you go. Now, how am I going to calculate, let's say, 2S? T, 2S. 
isn't that equal to T1 times P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K? Yeah, look good. And so we can actually calculate that. Then how about I get T2 actual? T1 plus what over the efficiency of the compressor? T2S minus T1. Look good. We've done it a number of times. You're getting good at this. That's great. All right. How about now we jump down here to T4S? T3 times P4 over P3, which is now 1 over 4, that's right, times K minus 1 over K. Did that look good? And then the T4 is equal to T3 um, minus um, 1 over the efficiency, oops, the efficiency of the turbine times T4. Uh, S minus, yeah. let me just add that. It's either way. T4S minus T3. Or if you like, switch the order. Maybe I switch the order here and make it a minus. Let me pause. Does that equation look okay or is it not okay? You like it? That's two thumbs up down here. Don't anybody be pressured. You don't have to get on any bandwagon. You can vote your conscience. We're coming up to an election. Just because, you know, people in Hawaii already know the results before they get to vote, you know, right? They, a, B, oh, Hawaii is the last to vote, and so they call the election before the polls close in Hawaii. They do that all the time. And before the polls close in Alaska. Oh, what's the sense of voting now? It's all determined. Anyway, anyway, isn't that true? I don't think there's any restraints that the media, they always want to call it the first, so. Then boom, we call it. All right. <clears throat> if you need to find out how Hawaii votes, you have to stay up till 3 a.m. or something. <laughs> Maybe not 3 a.m., but. Okay, does that look good? Now, what about the uh, answer for part A? How do I calculate this answer? It'll be the work to run the compressor minus the work that the turbine produce. And we'll have C sub P times T2 minus T1. Isn't that how much the work the compressor needs total? But it gets some contribution from what comes out of the turbine, which, yeah, and so it'll be um, T, the temperature at uh, 3 minus the temperature at 4. The, I know I'm going fast, but do you like it? Yeah. You okay? All right, so that's how you calculate it. Where, does, where is my specific heat at? Well, I would assume a constant specific heat. And so if you want, cold air standard, 1.005 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. If you want to uh, pick a temperature where it's a little warmer, well then, sure, you can use a value that's greater. Okay? Um, let's continue on. Cooling per unit mass of airflow. That's the cooling right here, isn't it? So QC, so QC is going to be C sub P, T1 minus T4. That's right. That'll be the cooling. I know I'm talking about positive rates of cooling. And then the coefficient of performance. It's a refrigeration cycle. What do we want? A lot of cooling, the answer for part A. Divided by, answer for part A, what we had to supply, the net. Does that make sense? Can you solve a problem like that? All right. In the interest, I'm going to show you the numbers for this problem. Assuming that K is 1.4? Yes, K is 1.4 with the cold air. Yes. Here it is. 
So the K is 1.4, and I didn't actually type in the C sub P, but you can actually, um, uh, I have to put in a C sub P here and here, but I don't need a C sub P to calculate that COP of the refrigeration because it cancels. It's in the numerator and denominator. So those are parts A, B, and C. Look good? You ready for a question, conceptual question? So somebody says, that turbine is too expensive. When we had a refrigerant, we just replaced that uh, with an expansion valve, right? Remember the expansion valve? We had a refrigerant. Somebody says, I'd like you to do a gas cycle, gas refrigeration cycle, get rid of the expensive turbine, replace it with a expansion valve. Will this work? Yes or no? And if no, say why. Okay, that's one answer, but you tell me, give me, I'm going to give you a chance to think about it. You've thought about it before, which is good, but I want you to give me an answer, and I'm going to walk around and hear your answers. All right, so let's pick it up here. Go ahead and sketch the cycle again on a TS diagram. We had a low pressure and a high pressure. Let me try and draw it like this. Uh, do we still have a high pressure and low pressure, or has we introduced a third pressure? Still only those two. Now let's take it through the compressor from one to two, and there you go. And let's leave the compressor to be reversible. I know that we could put in there some irreversibility as a compressor. Where would it kick it out to? Wouldn't it kick it out to, that would be 2S, and this would be 2Actual? 2S and 2Actual. But we're going to cool it. We're going to cool it all the way down here. Oops. Let's take a look at the problem we had right here. How much, when we, we had it at 270, and we cooled it to 315. So let's say that this is 270. And let's say this is 315, so we're going to cool it to 315 right there. That's state 3. Now, if we put it through a turbine that's ex isentropic expansion, you get down to 4S, true? Well, how cold was 4S? 4S was 212. All right. But then we had 227 because of irreversibilities. So here is 210. Did I say 210? But then, because of irreversibilities, it kicked over to four actual, right? What do you think? How how irreversible is that expansion valve? Is it very irreversible or is it reversible? Very irreversible. Very bad. It's as if it was the worst turbine you could imagine. Now, if it's the worst turbine you can imagine, where is state four going to? Okay, well, it's going to go down to the pressure line that one is on. But what's the worst? Somebody said it. Somebody right in here, I think, said it. They said, you know what? I, that expansion valve is still isenthalpic. Is that true? So is H4 and H3 equal the same? If it's... It, it, it is? All right. Are we working with an ideal gas? Three things you have memorized about an ideal gas. P, V is equal to RT at all. That's one of them. What's the other? For an ideal gas. No, oh, come on. Don't let me down. P, V is equal to RT all the time. What about U and what about H? They're only a function of temperature and they're only a function of temperature. So if this is isenthalpic and it's a truly an ideal gas, can you tell me what is the relationship between T4 and T3? It's the same temperature. Now, what do you think about... There's the new state 4. Low pressure and 315 Kelvin. And now that's ready to go into a heat exchanger to absorb some heat so that it can increase the temperature up to 270? What? Is that refrigeration system going to work? 
No, and hopefully you now understand why. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll see you next time.